my channel here at Petromella Place. Today I want to walk you through my new craft table desk build. Um, first of all, I just want to tell you why I built this desk. Um, I did have a pretty legit setup already. Um, my parents bought me three white tables about eight years ago. And though I do love the, I loved the tables. They were perfect. They were the color scheme that I was going for. They were the look of the craft room. They were good, um, but they did have flaws, and a few of those flaws were uh, lack of storage. And being a crafter, you know, you have a lot of supplies for different various projects, and it was very difficult to store those without um, my desk being super cluttered. Um, also, another problem that I was having was they were three separate tables, and at the corner, all of the legs met, and I couldn't sit at the corner. And so even swinging from one desk to the other, even though it was an L-shaped desk, I had to come out my, with my chair and then go back in with my chair on the other side. So I felt like the corner was really unusable space. Um, it was really just space that I had to like pile up stuff. Um, so it really bugged me. So I had those desks, uh, I'll drop the picture next, uh, for about eight or nine years. Um, and it was just time to make a change. Uh, so I first started looking at different desk build designs on Pinterest, and I kind of found bits and pieces of other people's projects that I liked, and I combined them into one project um, customized for me and what was gonna work best for me. Um, so first of all, my new desk, um, I'm just gonna list off what my new desk had to have. So one was storage. Uh, two was height wise. My old tables were lower, so when you're sitting at a chair, they were nice. But I found myself um, always in the kitchen because of the counter height, because I'm a stander and when I'm working on projects, projects I like to stand. So I found myself in the kitchen uh, standing working on projects. So my new desk had to have um, height so that I could stand on it if I wanted to. And then if I wanted to sit, I can just get a taller stool. And then the third thing was the corner needed to be um, accessible for use. Um, so I know you can't see right now, but I am currently sitting at my new desk. I'm excited for you to see it. Um, I am sitting at the corner. It's awesome. It's everything that I wanted. Um, so here, I hope you enjoyed the build. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. My measurements aren't perfect. Um, I'm still kind of learning how to build, how to do wood woodworking. Um, they're not perfect, so please don't judge me on my silly measurements or my ideas of how I built it. Um, like I said, I'm not a professional furniture builder. Um, I'm just someone who likes to try to do things, and if they're not perfect, that's okay. They're homemade, they're made by me, they're custom for me. Um, I'm just sharing this to hopefully inspire other people that you can learn new skills if you take the time to do it, and you are capable of more than what you think. Um, I never thought that I would build myself a new desk. Like, that's so cool. Like, a few years ago, I wouldn't have thought that I, I could do that. So, um, anyways, this video is just to show you um, my ideas of bits and pieces of other um, ideas that I took to build my desk, and I hope that it inspires you to, if you wanna use the same plans, you're more than welcome to. I'm gonna link my blog below to where I have more details of the build. Um, but as far as video, I hope you can just quickly go through it and get, what, get the information that you need and hopefully inspire you to build your own craft desk. Here is my old desk. It's super cute, but as you can see, different flaws. So first order of business was to decide on my measurements. I knew I wanted to do an 8x8 eight by, eight by eight, uh, table length L shape. So I went to uh, Home Depot and I bought most of the wood and supplies there. The six cube organizers for the legs I did buy through Walmart. So I picked those up from walmart.com. Um, here I am going back and forth uh, with the various uh, pieces of wood. Um, basically doing a herringbone pattern at the corner. So I just alternated the the wood going back and forth to measure out at eight feet long. And um, I just cut off what was needed to make that herringbone pattern at the corner. Also, I'm using an eight foot long four by one boards for the tabletop. 
After I got all of the boards cut to length, my next step was to mark on the wood where I was going to place the biscuits. So here you can see the circles, um, that's where each biscuit is going to be placed. I measured out five inches in between each circle. Um, basically here are as me and my friend, she's helping me hold the wood in place so it doesn't move so that I can place the biscuit uh, cuts with the biscuit joiner tool. Uh, this tool is very easy to use. Um, I can do a tutorial on how to use it in the future, um, but as of right now, just make sure that all of your your uh, lines are measured um, and lined up, and then get the tool up to speed and place it into the wood. Next step was to place all of the biscuits. So I just ran a bead of wood glue down the length of the board. Um, into the slots where the biscuits were going to go, um, topped the biscuit with a little bit of glue, and then used my clamp to pull the pieces of wood together. Then I clamped them and let them dry overnight. I did this with each side of the table, and you can see at the corner there's the slots where the biscuits go. Very, very easy. Um, and again, I let them dry for 24 hours. Next step was to measure uh, the 2 by 2s and build the underneath frame uh, to support the tabletop. So here I just cut all of the boards to length, I line them up, there's the herringbone pattern at the corner. Very, very easy. Again, 2 by 2s um, I did the pretty much the perimeter of the, the desk plus with some supports. And again, there's my herringbone pattern. Not perfect, but it's fine. <laughs> Next, I used some wood filler, um, and then I sanded the, the tabletop smooth before staining. Here's the stain that I used. Um, once I got the tabletops very, very smooth and got all of the wood filler off, I went ahead and stained them. I only did one coat because the, the single coat was the color that I was looking for, and then I let those dry overnight. At this point also I just used a old wash rag to apply the stain and it did a great job. Next I used the Wipe On Poly. This was a very easy product to use. It goes on pretty thin. Um, I did end up doing three coats. Um, I put on the first two coats with a couple hour dry time in between and then I lightly sanded uh, the tops after about four hour dry, um, I sanded with a 320 grit paper and then I, I applied the, the third and final coat which gave it the, the sheen that I was looking for. Again, this product was very easy to use. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know. After I was done sanding, as you can see, it goes from dull to shiny, and this is the third coat. I didn't have to do anything after the third coat. Um, it dried very smooth and very shiny. Last step was to paint and seal the outer perimeter boards. My husband helped me do this um, the evening when I was doing the final coat of the wipe on poly. The next step was to uh, screw the perimeter boards onto the, the perimeter of the desk. I used clamps because I didn't have anyone home to help me. So I used wood glue and then from underneath I drilled pilot holes and uh, used two inch screws to place the boards onto the front of the desk without them showing through. So this is the step that I want to talk about where my um, lack of experience came from. Um, with putting on the perimeter boards last um, was a mistake. I should have put them on when at the same time when I can I joined all of the tabletop pieces together. Um, I should have done this because uh, now that they are on as a separate piece, um, there's gaps in between the tabletop and the perimeter board. This really isn't that big of a deal, um, and plus it gives it a little bit more of a rustic look. Um,
but I'm kind of a perfectionist and I, I would have done this step differently if I had thought about it, um, I guess, differently. Um, the gaps aren't big, but I did have to go in and sand multiple places to get that board to sit more flush on the front and perimeter of the desk. Um, if I were to do it again, I think that I would have put these boards on at the same time as the tabletop boards were being conjoined, screwed them to the support boards underneath, the two by twos, and um, wood filled them so and sanded so that they were more flush um, with the rest of the tabletop. Then I probably would have taped them off, stained the tabletop, and then painted them white like I originally planned to. But because I was thinking stain, I was thinking paint, two separate um, types of products, I thought that they should be separated and then conjoined at the end. Um, but again, my lack of experience, I probably should have done this step a little bit different, so be nice on your comments. Um, and <laughs> any advice in, for future, if you see anything that I kind of goofed on or could have done a little bit better, uh, constructive criticism is always welcome, um, but be nice in your comments. <laughs> this is underneath at the corner. Um, I used three metal plates to conjoin the two pieces together. So I used three metal plates to conjoin the two pieces at the corner together instead of using biscuits. Um, my original plan was to do biscuits, but um, after further thinking it through, uh, we are a military family and thinking about moving an eight foot by eight foot conjoined desk in and out of the house or to another state possible country uh, sounded like a real big pain. So my husband ended up talking to me about it and we decided to use the plates underneath so that they can be removed and the two pieces can come apart and then it'll be easier for them to be moved one day. And here is the final product. So lots more storage, uh, lots more working space. I love the color of them. I love the, the craft room look still to them, but also kind of farmhousey look. Um, I love the herringbone pattern that I did at the corner. Though it's not perfect, it is um, really, really unique, and I do love it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Uh, stay tuned and look for more videos from me here at Petromala Place.